In the previous episode, we crossed the border from Argentina into Foz Iguazu, Brazil, on a taxi. Our adventure in the Paraná River Triple Frontier region continues as I made it to a place 10 kilometers north of Foz Iguazu city center, the Itaipu Dam. First thing first, I ate lunch at the cafeteria by the tourist information center, and it was a buffet. How much you pay depends on the weight of food you put on your plate. To visit the Itaipu Dam, you cannot visit there on your own, as it is a very important infrastructure that is connected to, well, national security. Everyone who doesn't work there will need to go with the tour. Most visitors go with one of the two most popular options. One will take you right into the actual dam, which is the most expensive option and the English tour only takes place once a day. The other one will be done on a double-decker bus which will take you to see the dam from its exteriors only. I took the latter because it required no reservation and you could easily buy a ticket at one of the ticket machines at the tourist information center. Alright, what are we waiting for? Vamonos! <laughs> Now let's talk about the dam. What's the whole point of visiting it? The Itaipu Dam today is world's third largest hydraulic dam by capacity. It spans over the borders of two countries, Brazil and Paraguay. When it was first completed in 1984, this dam was the largest dam ever completed in human history. And its immense scale was hailed by many as one of the new seven wonders of modern world. Even today, the Itaipu Dam is able to supply as much as 17% of Brazil's electricity demand and 75 of Paraguay's electricity demand, making it either the highest or second highest producing electric station in the world. The bus made a stop at the viewpoint of the dam's spillway. You'll see the enormous amount of water being discharged from there. This was almost like seeing another Iguazu Falls, except this one was 100% man-made. In fact, the water flow of the Iguazu Falls could only feed two of the dam's 20 generators. Impressive, huh? Because of how much electricity the Itaipu Dam provides, its operation is crucial to both the people of Brazil and Paraguay. In 2009, an unexpected transmission failure of the network that connected to the Itaipu Dam caused a nationwide power outage in Paraguay and a large outage in Brazil, even affecting cities as far away as Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro. After a stop for photos, our tour of the Itaipu Dam continued as we moved closer towards the actual structure. I began to notice with my bare eyes how immense the scale of the dam really was. Standing at 193 meters tall and close to 8 kilometers in width, you can easily imagine the sheer size of this dam without even visiting it. Just look at this generator. It's absolutely huge! And the Itaipu Dam has 20 of them! I kind of regret it of not taking the full tour, as this would definitely be something very interesting. We crossed to the other side of the Parana River. I instantly received a message on my phone saying that I made it to Paraguay. Well, I guess I could cross Paraguay off the list now, right?
The bus then started heading towards the top of the dam after reaching the substation area on the Paraguay side. Suddenly a huge lake appeared. This is the Itaipu Lake, a 1,350 square kilometer water reservoir created following the construction of the Itaipu Dam. Earlier we mentioned that the flow of the Iguazu Falls could only feed 2 of the 20 generators. Can you imagine how much hydropower this lake holds? If this part of the Paraná River could provide such powerful water flow, as much as 10 times the volume of the already impressive Iguazu Falls, what would have been like if the dam was never built? Actually, the most shocking truth about this artificial lake was hiding underneath it all along. Before 1982, some 200 kilometers north of where today's Itaipu Dam is located, there was another waterfall system that indeed had 10 times the water flow of today's Iguazu Falls, the Guaira Falls, which were also known as the Seven Falls. This waterfall system was the largest in the world at the time and was a huge draw of tourism in the region as both Paraguay and Brazil set up national parks to, and I quote, protect this natural treasure. However, when the Itaipu Dam construction plan was finalized, the fate of the Guayla Falls was also sealed. It would be submerged by the creation of the Itaipu Lake we see today. As a result, the national park designations of the Guayla Falls were removed by both Brazil and Paraguay. And eventually, the rising water went over the top of the waterfalls and forever buried the largest waterfall system in the world at a time. Our last stop of the tour was the observation deck that would give you one of the best panoramic views of the entire dam. To the right was the giant structure that's vital to today's everyday life in Brazil and Paraguay. To the left, you spot in the distance the spillway we saw earlier. According to the director of the Itaipu project at the time of the construction, the Itaipu Dam did not destroy the Guaira Falls. It lives forever in the form of the dam's spillway. This statement is certainly as controversial as the Itaipu Dam itself, even today. With the dam, millions of people were able to have access to clean, renewable, and cheap electricity. On the flip side, a natural wonder of the world disappeared forever. What do you think of the construction of the Itaipu Dam? Please leave a comment below and let me know.
Alright folks, it just came out of the uh, tour of the Itaipu Dam. Yeah, I tell ya, this place is absolutely impressive and definitely a must visit if you ever come to Fausto Iguazu or in the tri-border area. Like I've never seen any structures like this before and such an engineering wonder. The tour was very informative and I tell ya, you, you don't get to see something like the Itaipu Dam all over the world. So this is a very very unique experience and again i highly recommend overall the customer service in brazil so far is top notch and uh yeah like i was kind of surprised that first they take credit cards everywhere and everybody speaks more than two languages and i was kind of suffering an identity <laughs> crisis because when one of the uh customer service person over there tried to help me in portuguese and uh I replied English or Espanol and she immediately switched to Spanish which I struggled and then she uh, switched to English Afterwards, I returned back to my hotel and headed to dinner I went to a Brazilian barbecue place a few blocks away It was another fully loaded buffet style meal where you pay one price but get to eat anything you like and as much as you want. If you have checked out the previous episode, you know the rest of the story. I found out that downtown Fausto Iguazu became pretty abandoned after sunset. It felt so sketchy that I ended up calling an Uber for a 600 meters trip. That means for the rest of the night, I ended up staying inside my hotel room. However, after learning about the fate of the Guayara Falls, I became more appreciative of today's largest waterfall system in the world, the Iguazu Falls. Maybe this was part of life's plan all along. It gave me more time to rest so I could get better prepared for my visit to the Iguazu Falls the next day, for the second time on the Brazilian side. Will this experience be the same as the one we had on the Argentinian side? Is it really necessary to visit the very same Iguazu Falls from both sides of the border? Follow me to the next episode to find out. <laughs>